Intermediate Magic the Gathering Cube Construction, a guide to better and more affordable cube development. So you have started to cube and are now looking for ways to make that cube better. We're here to help. There are a lot of different ways to go about building a cube. This video will explore some ways to turn your cube into a more vibrant, limited environment without straining your collective resources. This is an intermediate cube video and is based upon the premise that you already know what a cube is and likely have a working one of your own. If you have not yet seen our video explaining what a cube is, you can do so here. If you would like to see our video on how to build your very first cube or our video on advanced cube building strategies, you may do so here and here. If you are looking for an intermediate cube building video, then you are already watching the appropriate video. Please continue watching now. Building an environment. One of the keys to cube development is to focus on your lands. The one thing every player wants to be able to do is play the colors they want to play. If your cube has no mana fixing or if your cube has unbalanced mana fixing, then this is a surefire way to alienate your players. Balance is the key and not just balance for you, balance for everyone. Cube players want freedom, the freedom to play the archetypes and colors that they want to play. An unbalanced cycle of non-basic lands is the fastest way to tell people playing your cube that you're favoring a certain archetype over another. Try to include cards that support all the common deck archetypes. For example, if you want to support aggro, the fast lands from Scars of Muradin and the pain lands from Ice Age and Apocalypse are great. If you want to support control, the scry lands from Theros or life gain tap lands from Cons of Tarkir are exactly what you're looking for. Look at what options you have available to you and use those. But bear in mind that you want to keep your mana fixing lands evenly distributed between all colors if your goal is to have a well-balanced cube. And your goal should be to have a well-balanced cube. And remember, most powerful does not always mean most fun, especially if it ruins the balance of your cube. If you have, say, $150 to spend on your cube, it might be tempting to buy a mana drain, but giving one color that huge advantage while ignoring the other colors will lead to an unbalanced cube. Now, cube, like all forms of magic, can get very expensive. In fact, most players say that the reason they do not have their own cube is one of cost. So here are a few tips to help you make your cube within your budget. Building for Cube. Proxies. Cube is not a sanctioned format of Magic the Gathering. It is for casual gameplay, and so it doesn't matter if you proxy a card here or there. In fact, this is a great way to keep your cube within your budget. Proxy cards. Getting a full set of dual lands would be nice, but it's a huge purchase, and I can honestly say I wouldn't blame you if you couldn't allocate that sort of funding to just having 10 lands in your cube. And proxies are also a great way to test out cards you are unsure about. No reason to rush out and buy singles of cards when you can just test them out in cube with a proxy first. If my options were to play with just four of the cons of Tarkir fetch lands in the cube, or to play with all five but one as a proxy, I would much rather have that proxy in the cube. It balances the gameplay and won't inadvertently narrow players' options. And although supplies are starting to dry up, a very popular option for proxies for cube are to use the gold-bordered cards that Wizards of the Coast included in their World Championship decks. Now, in the World Championship decks are a great source of really nice proxies in the regular gold-bordered cards, and some of them had some very expensive ones like Force of Will printed. But they also printed these blank proxies because Wizards of the Coast encouraged you to just proxy cards for practice and casual play to test them out, and that's exactly what you're doing in Cube. So you can usually find these on from online sellers at a really good price, and it can be fun to do your own art in here as well. Budgeting for Cube. Beat up 
cards. Beat up cards are perfect for cube. This is a way you can get powerful cards for a lot less money. Also, if your cube building endeavors are successful, your cube is going to get played a lot. Getting non-foiled and damaged cards will keep costs low, and it'll make you more comfortable about taking your cube out to stores and playing with strangers or pulling it out at parties where there is a chance of a drink spilling on the table. Focus on the gameplay before upgrading to foils and other blinged out altars. You'd be surprised how little money a mana drain that went through the wash in someone's pants 15 years ago will go for on eBay. This is also why a lot of people seek out the services of card alterers, because if you purchase an incredibly, incredibly damaged card for your cube, for a small amount of cash, you can find an artist, not even necessarily a magic artist, but there are so many card alterers out there who might be able to enhance and redo the art on that card for a reasonable fee. And so you can still get that feeling of a special, unique, and blinged out cube without investing the huge cost of having brand new near mint dual lands. Working with friends. Ask your friends what cards they would like to see in the cube. Check other cubes on Cube Tutor to see if there are cubes that are similar to yours. Then see what the differences are. Question those differences and ask your players what they think about those differences as well. Make a list. Write out all the cards you know that you want to get for your cube. Make copies of that list. Share it with your friends. Who knows what they might have lying around? Maximize your fun. If you and your whole playgroup agrees that your cube would be more fun if it wasn't singleton, then there is no reason to keep it as a singleton format. Maybe another player has an idea to try cubing a different way entirely. It doesn't hurt to try. Some of the best formats in Magic's history were created because people tried something new. Don't be afraid to test. There are no wrong answers as long as everyone is still having fun. The new set. The new set is always the right set to get started on or to upgrade your cube with. Which new set am I talking about? Whichever is the new set right now as you watch this video. The great thing about Cube is that every new set has cards to include, cards to upgrade with, cards to start with. So unlike, say, building anything for a modern deck or a commander deck where your deck's construction is going to force you into very old and very expensive territory, a Cube can be put together and upgraded with whatever is available at the time. Cube is a process. It is a work in progress. Improving your Cube will most likely be an an ongoing endeavor. As new sets come out, there will always be new cards to add to your cube. So don't think of it as a project that you need to be in any sort of rush of completing. There is no completion to cubes most of the time. If you have patience, you'll be able to improve your cube over time. Making a fun cube is more important than trying to make the cube. What's your favorite card that seldomly sees play anywhere else but in Cube? So first of all, uh, Crystal Shards and Erratic Portal. Uh, these two artifacts are great. I consider Crystal Shards a blue card because I would never want to pay three mana to use its uh, ability. Um, and Erratic Portal is a colorless card. Uh, both of them kind of do the same thing. They have the ability to bounce a creature to its owner's hand unless the controller pays one. This works on a bunch of different levels.